Colorado Springs has one of the largest, if not the largest, wildland and urban interfaces in the country. The more people living in that area, and it's a high fire risk area, but it also means that we have steep landscapes right next to our uh, city. And so if you think about a city that we built this size with so many impervious surfaces and such elevation drop, it's really a recipe for a lot of flooding and a lot of sedimentation transport as well. By the time the Arkansas River gets to the Gulf of Mexico, it goes through 180 water treatment systems. And so we have a special responsibility to protect it up here right at its source. And we really are the first users. And uh, Fountain Creek is a huge contributor to uh, the Arkansas River. There's been some, obviously, uh, a little bit of uh, stress and strain between the communities on the upstream uh, portion of the Fountain Creek to the north and the communities to the south. And uh, what all of us got together and said, you know, there's a better way to try to resolve these issues other than fighting each other in court all the time. And so the district is actually our attempt to have a diplomatic uh, approach to it, trying to you know, kind of strike that idea of what uh, uh, Senator Salazar said a number of years ago about the, uh, the crown jewel, the ability to make this something that's just absolutely wonderful for all of our citizens. And that's the, that is the primary purpose and mission uh, for the district, is, is to get there. The Fountain Creek watershed is quite problematic. It's a 927 square miles of land that includes not only the top of Pikes Peak, but the plains all the way down to Pueblo. The Fountain Creek Watershed Flood Control and Greenway District has done a really good job of bringing together El Paso County, Pueblo County, all of the jurisdictional uh, municipalities, and talking about these issues from a technical perspective, from the citizen's point of view, um, and dealing with projects on the ground so that we can start to see some of these solutions happen and we've seen a lot of, uh, of great impact from these projects over the last 10 years. One of the projects supported by the Fountain Creek Flood Control and Greenway District is the Pueblo Levy Dredging Project on the city's east side. The city of Pueblo had signed off on an agreement with the Corps of Engineers a number of years ago that said if the Corps would come in and help us fund a flood control levy system uh, that we would maintain that levy. Difficulty is, is uh, after that levy was built, the volume of water that was coming down Fountain Creek just started going up and up and up. And the amount of sediment that was being transported by that uh, actually daily flows and flood flows uh, was building up more and more and more. And so it was reducing the capacity of that levee design. So we needed to find a way to uh, basically do a dredging project that we're hoping is, is sustainable to remove as much uh, sediment as we can out of the creek um, and, the, and, and because of that increase its flood capacity again so that literally the levee system is designed to handle so much of a flood flow that once we take that sediment out we're back to that original design. My name is Graham Thompson. Uh, I am the Director of Water Resources for Matrix Design Group, which is a consulting uh, firm here based in Colorado. Um, I have been with Matrix for 12 years, and I've been working on Fountain Creek issues probably for close to 17 years. Uh, Fountain Creek is very unique. First of all, um, you've got the phenomenon that this creek falls from 14,000 feet to 4,000 feet. So you've got 10,000 feet of relief in Fountain Creek. You couple that with the fact that we're in the semi-arid west. There, that's very unique in the sense that we get just enough rain and snow to generate a lot of runoff and a lot of water, but not enough rain and snow to grow dense vegetation with root mass that can hold soil and banks together. Uh, the Fountain Creek Watershed Flood Control and Greenway District has set about prioritizing uh, where the most significant impacts are uh, along the creek in Pueblo County and, and El Paso County as well, and then trying to address some of those. So the project that you see here behind us um, was a project that we called Fountain Creek Restoration at Highway 47. Uh, there was a, a case where in the 2015 flood, there was just shy of 20,000 CFS that came through this reach. And then the creek started to, to move easterly and was putting uh, the Highway 47 
uh, abutment approach road and bridge at risk. And CEDA uh, and of course the city of Pueblo is at risk of actually losing uh, the bridge itself. And then when the flooding receded, we went and took a look at it and said, uh, hey, Colorado Department of Transportation, we're going to lose this bridge. We got to do something here pretty quickly. So we worked with uh, our uh, uh, water engineers to determine what was the best type of projects that we could put in there, not just to protect the bridge, but to put it in that is a long-term sustainable type of a design. And so what you see up there now is a redesign going significantly upstream from where the bridge is, redesign how the creek approaches the bridge so that instead of having the pressures either to the east or the west, it's aimed so that it goes right under the bridge. And then it's also designed so that we can um, protect the banks. Uh, we've tried to uh, terrace in the banks and then put in a whole bunch of natural growth uh, that'll come in and that root system ends up protecting it. Um, and then uh, the final side of it is, is we think it's going to be easier to maintain the way we've got it designed. We have to have the ability that when the water rises at different levels, we need to take the energy uh, and volume, frankly, out of it. The ability to get up and then spread out. And so it's, the design is literally terrace. So if the water comes up a little bit, it floods out into that first terrace. And then if it goes up higher, it floods out further. But the uh, plants that we're trying to put in there, the trees and the various kinds of growth, the bushes and everything else, are literally the kind of plants that resist that as long as they're not being undercut uh, by the current. So yeah, it's literally designed um, as a flood control feature in addition to uh, being a design to try to straighten the creek out. The district has done a suite of projects. This Highway 47 project uh, is just one of them. Uh, there are projects upstream as well. A project at the Antonio Trust to restore a bank there. A project uh, ongoing at Bar Farm. A project ongoing at uh, near Pinion Bridge. Projects that are slated for next year include uh, Overton Road. Uh, so those are the highest priority sources where either infrastructure was at risk or where a tremendous amount of sediment as the creek is responding to that changed hydrology that we've talked about is, you know, those are the highest priority sites to, to try to get ahead of, of the problem. Some of the projects we're working on right now are literally to control the floodwaters and the sediment contribution uh, issues uh, on private landowners who live north of uh, the city of Pueblo, but within Pueblo County. Hopefully they're gonna fix this eventually too. Then. For landowners along Fountain Creek between Colorado Springs and Pueblo, Flooding and loss of productive agricultural land has been a major issue. All the property you see here where they fixed is about 10 acres or more, and, that, and that's what we lost. So everything that you see out there is, was, was land, was these grass fields and stuff like that. Frank Massantonio farms and raises cattle on approximately 1,000 acres on the banks of Fountain Creek in northern Pueblo County. After losing land to flooding in 2015, the Greenway District installed structures designed to prevent further erosion, slow down sedimentation, and improve water quality downstream. It had to happen when they had that big flood. I guess that was in 2015, was, was a big flood and everything. And then they got all the money appropriated and just uh, started fixing everybody that, that, that needed the fixing, you know, one at a time and stuff like that. So hopefully it works out for everybody. In this particular situation, they put in them some hard points or the weirs and there's seven of them that, that are here and everything. And then I guess when the water hits them, when it gets high, it bounces, bounces the water back out to the river to keep washing any more of the banks out. So, you know, that's a lot of help. And there was a lot of rock put in there. They're about seven foot deep, I think, uh, these hard points. And, you know, it's going to get over them, I'm sure, to come up to the bank here. But they put willows and, and then uh, uh, the big blanket, I guess what they call them, that's supposed to have grass in them, what I understand, and then all the cottonwoods and everything that you see that they planted here. But the other interesting thing is, is because the stream meanders and because it has so much sediment in it, the method that a lot of the agricultural users use to divert the water has been heavily challenged because if the creek moves away from your head gate, okay, now what do you do? If the floodwaters come in and rip out your head gate and go on the other side of your head gate, what do you do? And so that is one of the challenges we're trying to figure out is what kind of mechanism can we help those landowners 
use in order to tap into their water rights and still not be affected by the uh, uh, the proclivities of this particular stream that likes to meander like a snake all the time. Yeah, the head gate, the last big flood, it just completely washed it out and there was like three to four foot pipes in it, you know, uh, in your grates to catch all the debris and stuff like that. And that just all got washed out just completely. And where it is, is it might be in Kansas, I don't know. So to get down to the south end of our farm and ranch, it's about four miles from where our head gate originates to where it's gotta go, you know. And it could get there, you, you know. And if they could give us a little bit of help as far as whatever it would take to get it in our Wood Valley ditch in the Young and Callaway, th then I think we're in pretty good shape and stuff. If they could help us a little bit, you know, if they could help us all the way, that'd be beautiful. Can they do it? I don't know. And uh, we've got some ideas. Engineers have been uh, playing with some ideas and uh, we've actually done some fixing. Uh, like sometimes we'll move a head gate up from an area that uh, is more stable or uh, unstable to an area that is more stable and doing things like that so that we can help them. But we have a lot to learn uh, in that area on how to make that effective. I want them to help everybody. You know, I think we were about one of the first projects they started here and that, that was fine. You, you know, that's, that's great for us, naturally. And they're working down and keep going towards Pueblo to the south. 